Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a great week. The inspiration for this week's painting was really just my color palette. As I've mentioned on a number of different occasions, I really love bright and bold colors. And so this week's palette is definitely going to be using a lot of those colors. The brightest and probably one of my favorite bright colors is Nickel Azo Yellow. This color never disappoints and even when it dries, it's always bright and vibrant. I really want to make the most of this yellow and I want to pair it with some other colors that will help make it shine. And of course one of those colors is blue. When you combine yellow and blue of course it creates some green. And I didn't really necessarily have the intention of going down the path of using green, but it does work really well for this palette and so I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to let you in on a little something that has sort of become a bit of a surprise to me. And if anyone had asked me this at the very beginning of my YouTube journey, I probably would have said that that would have been impossible or I would have been surprised that this would be the outcome. But anyway, over the last few months, I have noticed that when I do my video editing, I actually find it relaxing. <laughs> and I don't really know what it is about it that I find relaxing. When I first started my journey on YouTube, it was probably the most stressful part of the whole process because I didn't know a whole lot about the technology involved in posting videos on YouTube and I had to do a lot of learning along the way to get to this point. But I'm at a point now in my journey where as I'm editing, I actually know what I'm doing. And not only do I know what I'm doing, but I find it relaxing to watch myself paint. And maybe that's the thing, is I, I find it relaxing to watch myself paint and to edit my videos. So this is encouraging to me for a number of different reasons. And one of those reasons is that I hope you find my videos to be as relaxing to watch as I find them. Of course, I'm also hoping that my videos are inspiring you to pick up your paint brushes and your paint supplies and to get you creating. But I also do hope that it brings um, something you need in your life, something a little less stressful, something that brings some calm into your life and some zen into your life. Last year when I first started, my mom um, told me because she watches my videos every week as well and I mean so many of my family members have been along with me for this ride from the very beginning and I, I really I, I'm so so thankful to all of them they've been such a tremendous support so anyway what I was saying is that my mom watches my videos and at one point she told me oh man I, I tried watching your video last night I really wanted to get through it but I, I ended up falling asleep <laughs> and I thought that was one of the nicest compliments and I know that might sound funny um, that I find it to be a compliment but if my mom was able to fall asleep watching one of my videos when I know she has had some struggles with insomnia and, and sleep then you know what that is wonderful to me that means that she has found a way to relax by watching my videos so I hope, if nothing else, that you can get some uh, relaxation out of this and if you also get inspiration, then that's really wonderful as well. You probably noticed that when I applied that darker blue paint that's uh, over the yellow right now, initially I was just rolling my paintbrush. And I, I do like to use my paintbrushes in ways that you normally wouldn't use them or expect them to be used. Um, and the reason I do this is because it helps to create some different types of marks and these marks will help guide me in my intuitive painting process. So when I say that I'm using an intuitive painting process, what is it that I actually mean? For me, what it mainly means is that I am starting off not really having a plan. I will either have an idea or something will spark an idea in my mind. Normally though, I'll have some colors that I feel like I haven't played with in a while or that I feel inspired to play with and this will be the starting point for my painting process. 
And then as I go along, every single little thing I do leads to the next step. And that's what I mean. Like it's, it's intuitive. There's no real plan to it. I'm making decisions as I am going through the process and one decision helps to spark another decision and one mark inspires me to create another mark. So that's what I mean when I say I'm creating intuitively. There's no plan. I'm just going with my the flow of uh, my ideas and what my gut is telling me to do next. And I'm really, really paying close attention to what those gut feelings are telling me because oftentimes it'll be like, oh, you just did this. Well, maybe you should do this next. And instead of ignoring those little sparks of inspiration that come to me, I listen to them and I follow them. Does this mean that every single time I create something, I am absolutely in love with what I've created? Well, no, not really. A lot of the time I, I will say though that I do love what I have created. And if I don't absolutely love what I've created, I've always learned something along the way. And oftentimes, even if I'm not completely in love with a painting I've created, there is some part of that painting that I really do love and that will help me create my next painting. I guess a nice way to sum it up is that the intuitive creative process is more about the journey than it is about the final outcome. Once I was done creating my background, I let it dry completely and then I pulled out my fountain pen. Using black ink, I'm now looking at my background and picking out different shapes that I see and I'm starting to add some new marks. The simpler the better when it comes to mark making and stippling is one of the simplest and most easy ways to add some details to a painting that will be interesting and also help to create some dimension in, in my painting. Vertical and horizontal lines are also a very simple and easy type of mark to create. There's also nothing complicated about where I decide to put these marks. My background always shows me the way. When I first started this painting, I wasn't really sure where I'd be heading. I really was just letting my paint guide me. And guide me it did. When I was doing those little brush marks that were sort of flicking the paint upwards, it created what looks a little bit like trees or distant trees. And then creating those vertical lines that I just made also helped to reiterate the fact that they, those marks left by the paint looked like trees. So I'm just gonna go with it and it looks more and more like my painting is going to become an abstract landscape. When I create one type of mark in part of the painting, I like to repeat that mark somewhere else in the painting. Sometimes I repeat that exact mark using the exact same tool, and other times I'll go in with a different tool to make similar marks that look just a tad different, but offer another chance to create uniformity in my painting. White pens are another one of my favorite tools and I use them a lot and that for that reason this pen is starting to run out of ink. So I start off by creating a line and some marks using my white pen but it's again the ink isn't flowing so well because it's running low. So what I'm gonna do after I created the initial line is I'm gonna go back in with some gesso you can also use some white gouache to do this. And I'm gonna go over those lines with my micro mini brush and the gesso, just to make the lines a little bit more visible 
and um, less streaky. My painting process is not very uniform. That means I tend to bounce back and forth a lot between my different tools and my pens and my paint. Um, but typically, when I'm at the point that I'm at now, I'm working with pens and I'm probably not going to go in with any more watercolor other than to add a little bit of gold. Um, so the reason I'm mentioning this is because some of these inks are not uh, water soluble, of course, and so if I tried to go in with watercolor that tends to be more transparent, I would have a really hard time covering some of those marks that I'm making with my ink. I have been able to cover gesso with watercolor before, but usually when I do this it's always um, used in a very thick way so the, the paint is not very diluted and I blot it on top and if I were to do this especially if I were to do this on a painting that I intended on selling it would be very important for me to put a fixative on top to make sure that the paint didn't flake off. When I'm doing these types of paintings, I also really love to work with ink and dotting tools. The dotting tools I use are basically the same that would be used to make uh, dot mandalas. And when I dip my the tip of my tool into the ink and first apply it, it applies a bigger uh, circle of ink, if you will. But if I keep dabbing it onto the paint, the paper surface, it'll keep adding a little bit more ink. It'll just become progressively less and less ink as I keep dotting the tool. So I've decided to add a sun in my sky above my little landscape. Um, I know my sky is green and that wouldn't typically be the color of a sky, but it also reminds me a little bit of the northern lights. And so yes, at some point the sky can actually have a greenish tinge. So I'm fully going with it. Why not? You know, this is a painting that I created in my imagination as I was painting. It was not even imagined to be this when I first started. I had no idea where I'd be heading and now here I am and I think that my star gold is going to look particularly nice against all those colors.
For some added contrast, I pull out my white pen again and I add a little bit more white detail in the bottom portion of my painting. I flipped my painting around and added a little bit more white to the top part of my painting as well. My sun will certainly be a focal point in this painting and so I've decided to add a few more details to it to let it stand out a little bit more. I'm feeling ready to sign my painting, so this means it's done. Now it's time to take the tape off and have a closer look. Star gold with these colors just absolutely makes my heart sing. I hope I get a chance to see the Northern Lights at some point in my life. Until then, it's fun to visit them in my imagination. Thank you for making the time to join me on my creative journey. Without you, it just wouldn't be the same. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!